Now, let's take a look at the theory of magnetic domains. When a bar magnet is cut into many small pieces, okay, every piece is found to become also another magnet. For example, if you have one nice long bar of uh, a magnet, okay, and you sort of like smashed it, bam, 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 into these three things, each of these three would also become magnets. <clears throat> because this bar magnet is not one giant piece of magnet. You don't break this in half and this is a north pole and this is a south pole. It doesn't happen that way. Magnetism is actually made up of many tiny magnets or magnetic domains. Imagine within this bar, it's actually made up of many, many little microscopic magnets and all of them are pointing north to south. So that's why when you break it in two, you're actually breaking up into little chunks lah of the same thing, which is little, 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 little magnetic domains pointing north to south. <clears throat> so each resulting piece of the cut bar magnet is a magnet in itself. What are magnetic domains? Now, the theory behind it is the orbiting motion of electrons in a magnetic material makes each atom an atomic magnet. <clears throat> a group of atomic magnets pointing in the same direction is called a magnetic domain. For example, this group of atomic magnets and they're all pointing in the same direction. This part over here will be called a magnetic domain. Now, in an unmagnetized bar, the magnetic domains point in random directions. No one has guided them on where to point. Therefore, some guys point here, some guys point here, some guys point here. They all just point in different directions. Okay? And therefore, the magnetic effects of the atomic magnets, they will cancel each other out. For example, if you broke this part out, this part would become a magnet. However, if you combine this one with this one, this part pulls this way, this part pulls this way, they would actually cancel each other out. Then you combine this one even, then this part pulls this way, this part pulls this way. So all of these actually pull in different directions and therefore um, they will cancel each other out so that, so that there's no resultant magnetic effect. Therefore you have an unmagnetized bar. This bar over here does not have a magnetic effect on anything. Okay. However, in a permanent magnet, all the magnetic domains point in the same direction. Look at this. All of them are pointing, the arrows are pointing to the right. And therefore, at the point where the arrow heads are, this will be considered the north pole. Since they're all pointing in the same direction, the magnetic fields will be aligned and therefore, they are magnetic attractions or repulsions or effects will be aligned and not random therefore they will not cancel each other out and will actually act together okay the atomic magnets at the end of the bar magnet will fan out a little bit due to repulsion between light poles like you saw just now using the pins so it's a bit out lah but it doesn't matter that much it's still all generally in the same direction in a permanent magnet the magnetic domains point in the same direction Okay, you see that the ends of the arrow are the south poles and the arrow head side is the north pole. The theory of magnetic domains can be used to explain the following phenomena. The first one is magnetic saturation. When all the magnetic domains point in the same direction, the magnet is magnetically saturated and it cannot be any stronger. If you can get all of these to point in the same direction, then the magnet will be really strong and great. Next one is called demagnetization of magnets. Demagnetization is the process of removing magnetism from magnet. Okay, this causes the atoms of a magnet to vibrate vigorously. Therefore, it will mix out the directions of the magnetic domains. Over time, magnets placed side by side will become weaker because the magnets will continually be affected by the repulsion between the free poles. So we like to store our magnets using soft iron keepers. To prevent this loss in magnetism, bar magnets are stored in pairs with soft iron keepers across the ends of the bar magnets. So you can see over here as an example, these two are magnets and they are placed in opposite directions. For example, this one is north-south, this one is south-north. Now they will put the iron bars on the top and bottom like this. 
so that this one will be an induced south pole this one will be induced north pole and there won't be any clashes so this one will become an induced magnet as well this one over here will also become an induced magnet this one will become an induced north pole induced south pole similarly so if it's kept like this these two permanent bar magnets will be able to keep their magnetism for a long time or a longer time poles of the bar magnets are enclosed with no free poles 